Reunited once again. Welcome in the Texags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers in the Rollo Insurance Studio. It's time for the final hey. countdown. Hey. Steve and Seth McKinney are with us here in studio, first time this season. The chairs here. Welcome back, Steve. The chairs are all broken. Can you tell? I yeah, can because you got like a phone book underneath you. Because like I'm Ronnie's at my grandmother's. sitting there. When you're sitting in the chair and, and you're passing gas for an hour every Wednesday, <laughs> the damage the to the chairs is it gets rough. <laughs> How you been, bud? I've been good, man. I miss yeah. you guys. Yeah. What are y'all? Y'all been really screwing this up, apparently. Dude. Yeah. The last couple. Well, we we did you. last week on a Thursday. We need you thus to come the in and straighten, and straighten things is, out. Yeah, there's needs a lot. A lot needs to be straightened out around. Your hair's here. looking good. Hey, I just what do you think of this? Look at that situation. I'm just glad <laughs> that you got it inside your hat, man. It's been everywhere what lately. What's happening so. here? Dalton said I look like uh, what's the guy's name? Doc Brown from. <laughs> From Back to the Future? <laughs> to the future yeah. I like that. Or no, no. What's the not him? What's the guy from Independence Day? The scientist? <laughs> no, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. So I was gonna say Scott Stapp. I'll take it at the Dallas Cowboys. St- I'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> slap a, slap a Romo jersey on me and let me fly. <laughs> Steve, it's been a minute. So give us your state of the program address. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know what I'm laughing. Uh, um, well, first of all, I'll say this, the Miami game, I don't, obviously I was frustrated after the game, but I wasn't overly discouraged mm. to be honest. Um, I think, I think this is a team that's going to really improve throughout the season. Here's the, here's the things that I felt positive about one, the interception. I don't count either of the interceptions as yeah. legit interceptions. Yeah. Yeah. I think Connor Wigman is playing out of his mind. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to be a great quarterback the rest of the year. I think we have a, an explosive passing game. Mm-hmm. And we didn't maybe see as much of it against Miami as we did the week before. I think the offensive line will continue to get better. I don't think they played great on Saturday. I don't think they played that well at all. But I think they're very capable of playing better. So I wasn't dis- super discouraged by that. I think defensively, you know, I think we, we came in with a bad scheme. You know, we got out schemed and the DBs got exposed. I think the turf was a problem. Um, I don't know if it was the cleats so much as maybe we just weren't as familiar with that type of turf as that Miami team was. And, can that, and that can be a problem. I mean, Seth, you can attest to this. I mean, there's been plenty of times I remember in the NFL where we would come in after warm ups, change spikes. You know, we'd go from like a, a three fours to a five yeah, so eight or vice think, versa. What do you think happened there? That's been a topic. And, and, People, I, well, I was looking I saw at some guy on Twitter today, and Aggie, deal. and Aggie, like openly just writing, like you, you know, you dumbasses about <laughs> an at Aggie football, and it's like, nah, why do we do that. this as a like? I, we're all mad that you have to type that That's in. That's way a grown down adult, on my frustration. But as a level. grown adult, to say, hey, I'm gonna call an at Aggie football and write like dumbasses or something. Like, yeah. why do you do that? But but it makes I, it is a legit question of it's real do you know they go with you guys know this better than we do and you know it a and m included on saturday oh, you yeah. know they had other cleats in there and is other that spikes just a play? Yeah, yeah, yeah so here's the deal so Tell if us. you play like i all my favorite shoe was the uh the shark and it was just molded cleats it didn't have the spikes yeah. and i would yeah. just go out there and play in that and that was uh and i played a forever like that and then the, the texas game in 98 yeah. if you remember they we all the roll out in those sharks and that they they all had on spikes you knew it you saw it we were just commenting on it. we're like do we we're just slipping everywhere but that miami game was a little bit different i don't know if D, the dbs usually all have spikes because mm-hmm. they're not yeah. wearing sharks because like they're lemon. cutting too much yeah yeah and so there are spots you could go out there man i'm slipping and then yeah then you go in and go yeah i get them adjusted whatever at just like steve but said, it's up you, to the is it is it an individual would, yeah, player say thing to say hey i don't like my it's an individual player but it's also the the players got to figure out how to play and plant differently that's on different too. types if of you're turf, slipping yeah. you know fix it but that that's the problem is that you can if you're not thinking about it consciously and you go into a break kind of like what anias did and you plant like you would normally plant and then your foot just comes right out from underneath you you know there's yeah. that's not something you can just correct immediately as the play's happening yeah if you're not thinking about it you can slip on a situation like that it's just bad luck right where miami they may be so used to that 
that they're always thinking about it. They've adjusted the way they play, the way they cut to that type of turf. Just because, it, and well, and also it's so like what we saw that day: rain, stop, yes. rain, stop. You play exactly there, Miami. Too. You know how it is. So. Yeah. But I mean, like, so, I think that's the, still yeah, very I was about low. The nice to play to it, was that's massive. At the yeah. Of yeah. So y'all leave Matt Watson alone, okay? Just get off him. <laughs> Kimmy, it's not his fault. Kimmy, poor goose. <laughs> they're the best. Seth, you're state of the program. No, I'm, I'm with Steve on that. Um, I think that, that, that Connor is the least of my concerns. I, the offensive line did a fine job. They weren't perfect, but they did a fine enough job to be able to win that game. We got blitzed at every occasion. I mean, like, I, I think if we were the most blitzed team of the week or something like or of the yeah. year. I don't know. It was ridiculous. And that's, that was their answer to whatever it is that that coach saw that we were doing the week before bringing edge pressure like I've never seen before. It seemed like they were running a lot of cover, too, like keeping their safeties they deep were, most yeah. of the game, just kind of taking away those deep balls. And right. I don't know if that, was, if that left a lot of underneath routes open or if we just couldn't make hole shots um, or just didn't have time to, to make them. But, you know, that was the thing. We couldn't run into it. We were running average. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It was, we were getting no, was. like, explosive seven, eight-yard runs. It was all three, four-yard runs. Average, I think, and that was right. kind of they, my. They, they were okay. They were okay. okay. That was yeah. kind of my comment going into the game. I was like, make them make you stop passing, and yeah. they did that. They succeeded. But that's the only that. way you beat a cover two if that is what they were running most of the game. I couldn't really tell in the tight copy of mm -hmm. the TV. But the only way you beat cover two is you got to run into it. You got to yeah. either hit hole shots or you got to be able to run the football. And I think that's exactly. It's so funny. It's the opposite of what New Mexico did, right? Mm -hmm. New Mexico yeah. said, you're not running it on us because we know you can bully us if we – up front. So we're going to ask you to complete lower percentage throws down the field, and that's exactly what mm -hmm. they did. Miami watched that, and I think they were like, our front four and maybe even the front seven, those line – I did see a couple of plays where Miami linebackers out physical A and M O linemen, and that bothered me. I mean, they were running through them on a couple of instances. But for the most part, I think Miami said our front four can hold up good enough that we don't think you guys can do what you did to LSU last year because there's yeah. no A chain. Right. You might run for a hundred. You might run for 130 yards on us. But that that for you A and M right now, that's getting it the hard way, mm -hmm. and we're going to make you get it the hard way. And their plan worked. That is kind of what they did. And then to finish up with the issue, the defense is a real issue. We, got, we have to fix that, and we have to get our, our talent on the field and take lesser talent off, or the lesser talent's got to step up or get different talent in there, one of the two. But something has to give over there because it was just not good, and that is going to be an issue if we don't fix it. I mean – I don't even know what you could see against ULM that would go, oh, we did. Well, here, let me know. tell you what I, what I saw yeah, on our defensive line. Like, we have so much talent up yeah, front. I mean, everybody knows that. Why are we not turning them loose? It's like we have, a, we have a freaking Ferrari and we've put mud tires on it. And we got them playing gap, you know, two gap yeah. read. Penetrate, man. Yeah, they were let, playing to win. Let we were those playing guys, not to lose. Let those guys get up the field and create havoc. Let your linebackers clean up what gets past them. I mean, that's just my – that's my thing. Like, if you have those kind of players up front, you don't have them sitting there reading two gaps. Yeah, who is, who is like, your favorite team to go up against? Those type of teams? Yes. Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. the last I guy I wanted to into. face was a guy that was going to get on my edge as quick as he possibly could. Yeah, those guys are, those guys are a nightmare to block for four quarters. And they're, right. they're going to get some lost yardage plays. To me, teams that play that type of front are playing a bend but don't break type defense. So we, we don't were, have that. And we were bending we were bending and breaking. Yeah. <laughs> that, was that was the thing. You gave up 50, 48, 60. It's like, yeah, you're, you're playing a certain uh, – the opposite of the style Miami was playing with all the – Right. The, and it yeah. wasn't wild aggression. I would call what they were doing calculated aggression. Um, and, we're yeah, we're, we're watching A&M do the opposite and still give up more big plays than Miami did. How many big plays did A&M connect on? Was it just one? Evan Stewart, the 40 yeah. something. Yeah, I, I would call it. the Ruben, Ruben Owens 25 yards. Yeah, that was a good that one. That was a big play. Maybe let's call it three. But that was against a, an aggressive attack that, you know, in theory, you're like, hey, you're putting up at risk for big. Miami was getting them. And they were running awesome. screen passes that were going for 30 because of poor tackling. I, you know, when you talk about state of the program, Nuno, or, or where it's at, mm -hmm. I agree with Steve. And, and Seth, I think you echoed the sentiment, but 
I'm I saw enough to say this team can win a lot of games this year. They can lose a lot of games yes, too. Very true. If, if the ones they lose, we may see high scoring games. And I say high scoring, they are going to have to run the ball better to be able to score a bunch because teams are going to do what Miami did mm -hmm. and, and say, we'll bend, you, we'll bend, but don't break you guys because we think you'll break. You'll have a negative play on second and two trying to run the football inside the red zone. We'll stuff you for a three yard loss. And that's what happened on that very first drive where AM had to settle for the field. Everybody talks about the Evan play where he, you know, he catches it and you think he can turn it up and get the first, which he, he has to have watched that and go, damn. But the play before you had a second and two, which is an amazing down, and we run it and it's a, the, it gets absolutely Smashed. blown up for a yep. three yard loss. So you're in third and five. That's where I thought AM failed, Steve, was on a few key, key, key second and two, third and ones. Yeah. We talk about Trey Zoon jumping on that fourth and one. Raise your hand if you were so sure we were converting third, fourth and one. All right, I'm, I'm with yeah, you. I was. I would. I would point more back to, and this is guy, again. You're talking about a guy that is the least of my concern. It's yeah. Like the interception, like the Evan Stewart deal. Yeah. Get the first. That's what I would tell him. And yeah. like, get the first down. Don't ever think about trying to juke and whatever your way to get a touchdown. Just get the first down mm -hmm. and then go from there. Yeah. But. But whatever. I'm, I mean, that's not the reason we lost. It hurt I said us. about he's him so and talented. Connor. There ain't him so two best players. Exactly. Dude, you could point to there's 20 different no, things. No, I know, yeah. but those were big. The, those were big. The Anaya, the Anaya slip interception. Yeah. I mean, that was a fluke. The yeah. kickoff return for a touchdown where there was, to me, a very blatant holding, holding yeah. call that was missed. Did y'all see the play in the end zone and really study the, the touchdown before halftime? Oh, yeah. yeah. I studied it. That's but awful. The dude just threw him down. He took Tyreek Chappelle he slipped at first. and slung uh. him. <laughs> like, if this is the middle of the end zone, this is the corner. He took him. Oh. His mo their momentum was going this way. He slung him this way. It went this way. No, yeah, yeah, he as chunked blatant him, as they come. And I know, I know, look, the Miami fans are saying A&M is low linemen. We're holding a lot. And I did see a couple times where I'm like, damn, we're lucky they didn't call it. I mean, but that was a dude. touchdown play. Yeah in space, in the end zone. And it's the difference between the Miami leading 21-17 versus a tie game at 17 because that's a 10-yard that's a penalty that takes them back. You know, they basically maybe get one end zone shot from outside the 20 and then have to kick a field goal. It, it was a four-point yeah. missed call. Oh, it was huge. It was. And you know what? I, that was the point. That drive that we went down. I'm was sorry, I'm wrinkling your okay. McDonald's shirt. Too. This is, I've had this for about 12 years, actually. That was the point where I knew that we didn't have it that day. Yeah, like we just we didn't have it. I, I texted Seth when we had the ball. I was like, all right, this is perfect. All we got to go down, run the clock out, get some points on the board, go into halftime with the mm -hmm. lead. We're good. Mm -hmm. And then the exact opposite happened. <laughs> we, we, we missed the field goal. They go right down and score a touchdown. I'm like. No, oh, we're done. Yeah. Like this is this. They team, had the clock in their face. They don't have. They don't have it today. You know, it's just yeah. it's not going to be there. And they, I'll give them credit. And it they, wasn't the rest. They of the literally had the ball, a third and was it seven or eight, with. Oh, see, I going back. It's just hard because it was such a long feeling day, that Miami A and M cut it to eight with f five minutes left. Yeah. You didn't even yeah. have. You know how sometimes you have it to hold them like to a three and out or right, the game's right. over. All you had to do is keep them from getting a two first downs. It, w it was five minutes. Yep. It they was possible, got the ball but back our defense with, just did not have it that Yeah, at all. And, and they got them to a third. They had a big three-yard loss, and mm -hmm. they got them to a third and eight. And then, you know, and by the way, on that play, the guy goes right through DeBerry's face to push off yeah. to get open. But here's the one thing I'll say. The holding on the kickoff, the two touchdowns, but they were blatant penalties. Mm -hmm. Blatant. Um, they should have been called. The SEC officials failed yeah. miserably. With right. that said. That won't be the only game. Yeah. With no. that said, that is not why A&M lost. So do not get me wrong. I'm stating factual plays that unless you're a complete buffoon or you just want you so badly to go, we suck, Durkin sucks, Jimbo sucks, Tex Ag sucks because we thought we'd be good. It's Nuno's fault. It but if you, unless you're one of those losers that want to do that, or if you want to look at it rationally, you'll say this. Those three plays were very significant. They should have been called properly. 
that's not why Texas A&M lost. And all three of those plays are examples, especially those pass plays of this. The problem Saturday, Seth, Steve, two guys that played on the O-line. In that football game, the Miami Hurricanes were noticeably more physical than Texas A&M. And that is, if, if I had to say, like, that's why A&M lost. I felt like there was a different sense of urgency outside of the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And, and then one team was more physical than the other. And that includes, we think about these guys in the trenches, right? But I'm talking about, I'm talking about in the secondary. DBs, yep. Don't get thrown around. Yeah. Get called for defensive pass interference because you're throwing their receivers around. When you come over to make a hit, wrap up. It, it, Jordan Gilbert in that play, A, he should have been there sooner. B, the, the question should have been whether or not we got called for targeting there because you took the receiver's head off <laughs> and almost took him out of the game. And don't let on the contact, you know, if I'm bumping you, go from me to Steve. Don't get knocked all the way to Nuno <laughs> off your track. So, to me, like, those calls were indicative of, hey, who was the more physical yeah, team? Yeah, no, you're right. We hand. were definitely not the most, more physical team. I mean, they, they – the first – what two drives when we had the punt yeah. return or the you know the block punt and the muff punt? I mean, we looked like we were the more physical aggressor, yeah. and then it just flipped on a dime. Right. And it, literally it's from that point amazing. forward, they were the aggressor. Yeah, we were on our heels the rest of the game. We were the ones making the mistakes. You know, and that's if you would have told me it. entering this game that they were going to edge pressure us like they did, I'd been like, oh man, we're Evan Stewart's going to have 300 yards, you know what I mean? He got and I, I know that. He, he almost a, he got there. He did pretty good. But it was, it was incredible to watch them do that. And we had answers, and, but not like the answers that I thought we would have getting that. But and credit, I give, but credit Miami. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Miami's a good football team. Well, Better than they were last year. And Van Dyke played a, a lot better he than did, he did last but going, year. But speaking specifically of our defense, who I'm very down on, not the players themselves, but – you know, we just mentioned his name. But I think that you can make changes, man. I mean, it happens all the time oh, yeah. Yeah. that you They're can to make adjust. the change that you need to make and, and roll out a different defense. Yeah. I mean, and they just gave the whole possible. SEC a freaking blueprint on how to mm-hmm. dominate that defense. So right. they got to make some changes. There are answers. Like, basically, as negative as I am about the defense, I'm not giving up hope that we can get it fixed. Yeah. All right, let's hit a break here. We'll come back. I got And I got a comment after that on exactly what y'all said. You want to do it now? Well, I'll just say Miami's DC, um, I thought he, he, you were saying it was, he took it to a, you know, it was, it was, you were shocked by that. They were bringing that edge pressure, but also being able to take away. I want to say that about DJ Durkin and the A&M defense after a game. So show me that against Auburn and or Arkansas or Bama. Like I want us to sit here and be saying that about, the Aggie DC, not the first year Miami DC from Marshall, who, who did a great job. <laughs> did, I don't man. care that he's from Marshall. I we, we talked we about, about it. Dialed it in. Man. He had it a top impressive. five defense at Marshall that that kicked Notre Dame's butts last year in South mm. Bend with Marshall players. We forgot about that because we were mm. watching App State. But I want when we come back, David, to <laughs> yes, talk sir. about what Steve just said. Miami is here's what I know about them. They are a hell of a lot better than they were last year. they got a great quarterback. And they've got a really good quarterback. And I want us to talk about the question you asked earlier. Where's TVD? How good is Miami and how good is TVD compared to other quarterbacks a going to see this year? All right. So, Billy, you teased it at the end of the last segment. You wanted to talk about where Miami is potentially better. Um, how good is Miami and how good is TVD, Tyler Van Dyke, considering who A&M is going to play? Where are they in kind of the – the pecking order, based on what you've saw, seen so far this early, and I put them. I put that passing game and Tyler Van Dyke for sure in the top third of the SEC. Yeah, um, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can say top three because I haven't really watched enough of the, the whole SEC yet. But I'd say they're for sure in the top. He's in the top third. Okay, and uh, Miami actually. as well as a top three SEC team. Uh, top yeah, three? I don't know about that. No, top third. Oh, top, top third. Ah. Uh, I don't, David, I don't know. Like, I was impressed with them, but I, we also know where A&M went wrong. Like, we if talked the other day. If not top third, then we're not top third, Billy. Well, I, so. I don't think we're top third right now. Yeah. I, I think the ceiling for this team is to get in there. And I don't think, I don't think they're, like, 
so far from it. I think you talking about our offense or like just as a team, just what they're capable of doing against the schedule. Yeah, like I, I look like against who, the schedule. Who's like, been really exactly. impressive from That's the what West? I was about to say, no way. I like I've been impressed wide, with like dude, Arnett, open, how man. he's. But they went to overtime with Arizona at Mississippi State. You know. <laughs> LSU will learn a lot about this weekend. They have to go to yep. Starkville. I don't think that's the toughest test in the world, but if they struggle there after losing to Florida State, like Florida State, I think is better than Miami, but mm. I don't think that gap's massive. I mean, no. those are two good what, what quarterbacks. Makes you, I, was, yeah. I was about to say, what makes you say that Florida State's? I just I think I'll better. give them more credit because I saw them do it at a higher level last year, and I think Miami we've seen do it against an A and M team that. We don't know how bad yeah, this defense we just, is. We don't know yet. And we they know how, giving A&M too much. We know how yeah. bad they were Saturday. <laughs> but I think Miami is a contender in the ACC. Yeah, well, I think they've that's They've looked fair. better to me than Clemson. Yeah. they. I wouldn't say they've looked as good. Florida State would – look, Florida State's quarterback is – is. I don't know if he's – he's not a better passer than Van Dyke, but he's he's a better – quarterback yes. right now like he's i wouldn't want to play him yeah. i'd rather play van dyke before a, i mean all these fifth year senior quarterbacks i mean guys, yeah. that that's an You're advantage right. that's a huge advantage well, yeah, that lineman kind of it's an advantage everywhere if they're that kind of player but we're in year six of this deal so a&m yeah. ha, they have plenty of experience to go to miami and win oh there's zero excuse nobody's making excuses saying. for yeah. that but i can tell you that after sat after the first two weeks of the season mm -hmm. The one thing that gives me hope is that the West is wide open. Yeah. Completely yeah. The open. The wild it, West. If we watch the Alabama-Texas game, you know, credit Texas, they yeah. went in there and, and whooped them. Yeah, they did. Alabama, I don't Who was that? That's, that is that, not, You know who that I don't is? Know who that was. I do. Because I, I said it all off season, And, I, you know, Texas people won't believe this because I was – talking trash to them on Twitter saying they were going to lose because I did I did think Bama would figure out a way to win it at home right but I said and you know we've said this this was a Bama team that is so beatable and they when are, Texas goes sure. in there with Sark as an OC versus Tommy Reese and and Sark versus Kevin Steele on his like 19th tour of duty and Quinn Ewers versus Jalen Milrow Hmm. That you go into that game with a big advantage if yeah. you're Texas. And more importantly, it, it's about Texas. They performed. But it's about Bama. And the Longhorn fans don't want to hear this. But we've been saying, I've been saying this for multiple years now. Yeah. Who's playing at Alabama at wide receiver? Can't tell you. Texas, at way better receivers. A&M, way better receivers. At Bama, if you've been in the SEC – and their fans think this is oh this is the SEC, this is the worst Bama team that Nick Saban's had since year one. Yeah, and it's like fifteen years or whatever it is. I don't know what their record will be if they go out and finish whatever in one. Texas fans have bragging rights. Texas fans can say see, but the reality is that will be an indictment more on this year's SEC mm. because I watch college football. I watch Alabama every year taking off any maroon colored glasses because the Aggies beat Alabama two years ago. So if they, anything, they almost beat if, them last if year. If anything, yeah. I'm sitting here discrediting the worst that fourth down so, call ever away from. Beating yeah. Them. So this is not, if anything, it's a discrediting a and M to say Bama's trending downwards, taken away from their accomplishment. So this is not a maroon colored glasses thing. This is a crimson colored glasses. <laughs> I'm looking at Alabama cause I've watched them from the sideline every year since 2012. And the defense that they have that versus what they had when they had Kirby Smart, when they had Jeremy Pruitt, when they had first rounders and top five and ten picks at every level, yeah. mm -hmm. multiple players. I don't understand. Those where days they went, are gone. Though. Well, where did those guys go? I mean, well, they, it, it's, just a, good, it's a legitimate question because they have like <laughs> Yeah, I was like going to ask it, Seth. Three hundred <laughs> points more on the recruit. How do you how do you recruit top one, two, or three every year, year after year, and then this year they just don't have the dudes? I, what, it's it's a great that? study. What, Some, where did that happen? You know, they're well, Nick can you Saban. Say that about us? I was about to say we're yeah. a part of that study. Yeah, but <laughs> Nick Saban and Alabama though. have always been above that. Yeah, yeah. We it happens. One year. It, it happens at Texas. It happens at USC. It's Bama's normal. never done that. Exactly. It's normal everywhere where you just hit it wrong, or guys now with them transferring. Now, somebody has said this. 
you know, you had a smart, snarky, anti A and M hating dude in the media, which I hate. Like, if you're going to cover national college football, and, and I forget his name, Nuno. He used to work for Texas football. Now he's at Bama. I don't dignify his name. I don't even remember it. But saying, making kind of a comment of how all these D linemen are wasted here at A and M, and it's taken down these other programs. No. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw that. Georgia. It, it's low hanging fruit. If you went to Baylor. And you don't like A and M, and go in the national media and try to pretend to be an oh, unbiased. Shit. I know you're talking. Yeah, about. I don't know his name, but if you want to do an unbiased take, um, then really go out there and say if you are biased against a particular, like, hey, I cover national college football, but ever since my college and maybe even high school days, I've always hated A and M. Put that in your damn bio. <laughs> at least just be out there with it. You guys that want to call what we do here or at Orange Blood or Inside Texas or you know. Any of those sites you want to call them, fan, oh, they're fan sites. They're bi- that's fine, but put I mean, in your aren't bio. They, aren't they fan sites? You know, if you're <laughs> if you're if you're the athletic and you don't like that Jimbo doesn't give you the access that other programs do nationally, just say it. If you're, you know, if you're uh, Barrett Salee and and Jimbo hurt your feelings when he was at Florida State, just say it. Just say it, and then say what you want. And even if it's accurate, just say, hey, I'm going to point out as much as I can to diminish and belittle this thing, whether they're winning, losing, whatever, because I don't like the coach or I don't like the program or I grew up not yeah. liking the school. Those, Say it. those people are obvious, dude. They are, but they're, they're not. Obvious. They are to us. They're not. They are around. to us, but they're not to the national. Yeah. And that's a problem. Audience. But, but with that said, uh, you know, I, I think this, this team right now, they deserve the, the, the heat and, and, and the criticism, but it it's not close to being a done deal because, like Steve said, it's one game. We don't know how great Miami will be. Mm-mm. I do know they're better, and they could be pretty good. You know, I mean, they just, could be. Just think back to the 2020 season mm-hmm. when we just got kind barely of – Barely beat Vandy. Barely beat Vandy. Smoked got by s- Bama. Smoked by Bama. And we, I remember almost being on this show after that game and kind of thinking like, you know, I don't know. Don't know where this team's going. Don't know how good we are. Not not feeling real good about it. I, I'd probably already adjusted my expectations to like six, seven wins. Mm-hmm. And then look what they did. They just went out yeah. and just bam, 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 put teams away. How about in Seth? The third, fourth quarter, week after week. I like to go back to all's experiences. That's why we have you on here. Is that why? Well, well and and the that's comedy. the only reason. And the comedy okay. and the beautiful hair. How about Seth in '98? <laughs> I agree. And you I, guys I was thinking lost about that. to Florida, a great Florida State team, but yeah. you lost that one. Remember, remember, you guys like barely beat, and this is when Kansas was Kansas. Yeah. We barely beat Kansas. We, we were barely beat Florida. everybody. Well, yeah, but I mean, early, and that's <laughs> how A&M would have to win just this year. Grind it out. <laughs> but y'all barely beat Kansas. There was, you know, a, a, a QB change there, yeah. and. It you ended up winning the Big 12. I'm not saying this team is going to go on to championship, but you said that. The league was there for the taking, and you took it. You mentioned Bama. They went from four first-round draft picks at receiver. Think about what I'm saying. Four first-round draft picks at one position Oof. to three to two to none. And they went from and they have a quarterback Pruitt they can't and throw. Kirby Smart <laughs> <laughs> to Golding and Kevin Steele. And they went from Kiffin and Sark to a guy that Tommy. wasn't that impressive a- at Notre Dame and is a baby. So I think Nick Saban's coaching staff has gotten worse and worse. And I think the, the players on the field, the playmakers, and they went from Bryce Young to Jalen Milrow. We watched Jalen Milrow last year. Yeah, he's terrible. We is saw. There, this is a real legitimate question. Is there a, a density level of five stars over the last few years that Alabama once had that's going elsewhere because oh, yeah, of I think, And I think part of it is guys transferring out. I think part of it, because he had this great thing where guys were going to be patient and wait. Yeah. Part of it's transferring out. Part of it is like the, the snarky comment about A&M and the five-star. Hey, Texas has a bunch of dudes that, that Alabama wanted. So it's Texas and A&M. And it's Georgia, Georgia has getting, the most. Yeah. Georgia has the most. I mean, Georgia has a ton of dudes, particularly on defense, that Kirby Smart went and got that he was normally getting to Bama. So mm-hmm. what happens is they were this far ahead of the pack, and Georgia joined them, and then Alabama came a little. 
Look, they it's still might run the table in the SEC. <laughs> I don't but see over that. the last two years, they have played more. Close I'd agree games. on how they. Unless look, they're going to change quarterbacks. Agreed. Dude. Agreed. They're not going to go anywhere. Over the last, and I said that too. Bama will play a different quarterback against A and M than they did against oh, Texas. Oh, hundred percent. Said that before the year. Second part of that is, Bama has played more close games in the last two years than they have in yeah, every year prior to Saban. Yep. No it's question. obvious. But so no therein lies the opportunity. We want to end on one little anybody. positive note about A and M. We do have a great quarterback, and we have a gr- great two receivers at least, yep. if not more. And I have very, I have a lot of confidence that we're going to put up the points needed to win if we can get a defense to at least show a semblance of stopping somebody. I'll yeah. take Ben, but don't break at this point. I hate saying that, but I think if they can do that with this offense, we got a chance. You, you could be a team like Ole Miss two years ago yep. or LSU last year. I'm going to read this from Beaglow on the YouTube yeah. page, who's a high school coach. He says their DC did a good job when they ran cover two, the short side that was set where they had the uh, cat blitz, corner blitz. On defense, they the were fast side. because when a coach makes assignments and rules simply and easy to process, you can play fast. Um, and that's part of the reason why we look slow and passive on defense. So he thinks they're they're thinking more than more than playing. I remember years ago, I Seth, when you that. played. I remember when you played. It was, uh, and that's why we thought we'd see the jump under Durkin, and that was my hope, guys. Yeah. And that's what I talked about was yeah. year one to year two. You would think that they would be thinking less, reacting, and and just see ball attack ball more. Yeah. Because they're in year two and they're thinking. I don't want it. any of my defensive players thinking. Not when you have that kind of talent. That those kind of schemes work good when you have like smart players that aren't like four and five star kids, and they're they get what the about scheme down. Smart four or five star. Kids? If you have that plus, yeah, yeah, that's 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 even better. But I, this reminds me a lot of like Vic Fangio's defenses. I remember because I had him with the Colts and mm-hmm. with the Texans. Yeah, and early on, it was that I'd hear those same comments from the defensive players. You know that it's. It's very confusing. There's just a lot to know on yeah. the defense. So and you're, and, and you're they were never good, probably, ever. No, not defense. those first couple of years were always bad. But then once you had guys that had been in the system yeah. for a few years, then it became really good. And you know, College football, though, effective. you know, you just don't have time yeah, for you that. You don't. You can't, you can't have it. You've got to turn it, the Stallions it, loose, man. Let college, them run. I'm with you. College Get your football talent so on the wild field. how fast it can swing. Like – the dynamic between Texas and A&M right now on the recruiting front, it, it's a huge swing that happened on Saturday. And the pressure on, like, Jimbo and the Aggies versus the satisfaction in Austin and the pressure on even Saban in Alabama, it shifts in the span of, hey, do they not, why don't they call a fumble on Jatavian Sanders on that sideline? What just happened? You know, it shifts in the span of, Bama goes up in the second half there and looks like they might be making a move in that game. And Texas and recovers. Credit yeah. them. They recover and win. A&M gets off to a nice early start. You think they're going to look good on Saturday? I had a tweet making the rounds or the Longhorns trying to make me look bad because I said in my article, losers, read my stuff. Go take one line out of it. Put it around. You guys are little you-know-whats. But, <laughs> but you go out there and you take that clip, and I'm saying go to Miami, beat the mm-hmm. U, Get to two and zero. Oh, have everyone excited. Watch Texas go to Bama and get bullied around. Mm-hmm. What happens? What are we doing today? The opposite and, happened. And both of those things could have happened. Good job, Billy. Yeah, I so put you're the, the jinx. jinx. Yeah, oh, it's the guy that hates jinx. I, just put I, it out there. I do that, but then I also am on the other side of it where I raise optimism. So I'm I'm like the wizard here. You've but been like the Aggie it. therapist all yeah. week. I'm sure it's been there. It's we've all needed it. But how close <laughs> was it? You, David, you finish that half right, it's completely and Alabama <laughs> doesn't lose momentum at home. The whole thing. So my point is, there's not time to get into year three or four of a defensive coordinator yeah. with a bunch of old guys that finally have figured it out. It needs to happen right, You're right. away. And as much as I hate to even admit, because yeah. I hate Texas, Same they have flipped the scheme. script. Let, let me on throw this in here. Talent level, it's crazy. Uh, you may have seen it, but apparently, no, Jalen Milrow also. has been. Bench is going to be uh, Tyler Buckner starting for Bama this weekend. Oh. That just came out. Oh, that's that shocking. Game. I hate to see that. <laughs> that <laughs> color me shocked. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because Milrose, look, he looked like such a stud quarterback on Saturday. I can't imagine well, why they, why take they him out. You knew they You knew that when they went to get Buckner. They yep. should have put him on the bench at halftime. By the way, if I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken, the Marshall, they might have picked Buckner three times. He, he definitely was the quarterback that lost to Marshall and the, uh, the D.C. we saw this week. we got to get to Freak. 
of the week. Ooh. Yeah. Do I get the and song? They, and they got more. They got more troubles than just quarterbacks. Steve's got a really. vicious thought. Yeah, they do. Freak of the week. It's the freak, freak of the week. week. All right. <laughs> I feel like we're not into it as we're much not, as we usually are. It's Steve's first week. visit. Come on. So uh, you want to go first? Why not? Let's do, do it, David. Why not? Just put me on the spot, bud. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. My freak of the week. Let's go. The week of the freak. Dude, how about how about a little Ruben Owens? Oh, interesting. I got a good a, one. I, I really there, he's shown some flashes that have gotten me a little excited. As a true yeah. freshman, I'm like, dude, this guy's gonna be a beast out mm-hmm. in the backfield catching the ball. Once he and, he and you know when he's running too, like he's getting hit, he's falling for two or three yards. He may look tall, may look long legs, but dude, there's some power in those legs. He's not getting knocked back at the line mm-hmm. of scrimmage. He's falling forward. Once he figures things out, gets a pass pro and everything worked out, I think he's going to be our our workhorse. So, yeah. I'm gonna go with uh, Walter Nolan and getting him active and and changing up some of the things that they did, hopefully on defense and let just letting him tee off versus ULM because. The only thing that I can leave the ULM game with and feel confident in going into the Arkansas is that our defense changed something and they're mm-hmm. doing something different versus the same stuff and winning. Because the same stuff and winning doesn't help us against Arkansas, in my opinion. Or so Auburn. Turn it, that's what I'm – whoever we're playing next. So Okay. Uh, I like that D-line one because ULM – hasn't thrown for all I think they've thrown for like I don't know if they've topped 100 yards passing in their first either of their first two games so they're going to try to do I would have to think this line up don't get your quarterback killed if you can run three four yards get first downs and, and take this crowd and frustrate everybody early because of what happened to A&M last week then do that that's your that's your chance that's what it's actually what ULM did here a few years ago when they almost beat Kyle Allen uh, they oh, yeah, just had the ball. If they I didn't, if they were about to give it back to ULM. To what win was it. that, dude? That was horrible. And then went the next week, <laughs> and then went the next week and beat number three Auburn. I beat know. the brakes off. So well, oh my early. Gosh. Um, my freak someone. of the week. I think I'm going to go actually Nuno with with someone we haven't said. And I'm torn between two guys, and you'll know who the other one is when I say it. But I'm going to go Moose Muhammad. Mm-hmm. And I think he or Anias has a big game this week because. They've got to get both of those guys more involved if we're going to see this offense really fire on all cylinders. Why don't they just put a nice in the backfield and let him run the ball and block? I said that this week. Something. I'd like like to see. they got to get him involved more. And and I think think he's as good as any – I mean, I think long term – He's still the same guy. Your ACL is ACL. Like, you're 100% from that. that So, he's still the same guy. He did an ankle or something. Yeah. But but, but he (laughs) he blocks. I thought it was. (laughs) He blocks – he blocks in pass pro. And I think they ACL. need that. I know, there you go. He's still the best. I think he's got to be the best receiver coming out of the backfield. That Ruben Owens is pretty special in that regard too. I just think, and it's a way to get more of Moose out there too. Yep. So I think it's a double win in that regard. We need to see more though. My biggest thing I want to see this week is I want to see those running backs show me something. Like Owens, I like. Like you said, like there's a lot to love there. Um, Le'Veon Moss, will he be back this week? If it's not this week, it'll be Auburn. I'd like to see him get some rust shaken off this week. They're going to need those guys mm-hmm. to be good in SEC play, not just yeah, okay. They, they need are. to be good. So that's what I need to see to, on Saturday more than anything on offense is the running backs have some success. Let's try to get the sleeper of the week here in the next two minutes presented by the Sleep Station. Go see sleep Jared Station. McLeod and ask about the tempur and the purple mattress in the Specs parking lot of the tech, of Texas and Harvey in front of the Lowe's and William D. Fitch and Highway 6. The website, thesleepstation.com. Seth, you go first with the sleeper. I'm going to go with uh, Damani Richardson because we need that him and that position to wake up a little bit from what they did last week and hopefully show us something different to, to have a winning occasion out there. So this is, you want your sleeper to wake up. I agree. Right. He does need to wake up. Um, I'm going to go with – a defensive lineman, Seth, if you don't mind. <laughs> Shamar Stewart. I think he is one of those guys that it's time to really cut loose. He, he had a good pass rush against Miami where he really dipped and ripped and leaned and got to the quarterback. But we need to see more of that. You mm-hmm. know, there's too much. He disappeared for way too much of that game for my take. He needs to be one of those guys. He, he's first-round talent, right? He's probably top ten physical talent 
but we're not seeing top 10 NFL play right now consistently. And I think if he can figure out how to do that play in and play out and change the game, force them to account for him on the defense, I think we're going to, I think the defensive line, the defense in general would be way better. So I'm just, I'm expecting to see him really kind of step up a little more than he has. Billy? Sleeper of the week. I'm gonna go on the defensive side and and I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a flyer here and I'm gonna go with one of the guys that you know I, maybe this is just wishful thinking, but one of the guys I wanna see more and I'm gonna go with uh I'll go with Eni White okay. making a couple plays. Wishful thinking. Has he yeah. even been playing? Not not as much. What number hardly. is he? Uh he's six. And six. Right now, six. I don't remember seeing him. I didn't I haven't seen enough. We do need some quick twitch guys out there. Yeah, and so, know. but the problem the problem with this is I don't I don't think ULM is going to just sit there and, and drop back. Yeah, you know, I, don't I imagine they'll have a similar game plan in New Mexico: run the clock, shorten the game. You know, yeah, try to get in and out of there as quick as they can. By the way, we are up against it. Louis show's about to start. Make sure you do listen to him. But if you want the pick six, keep it on the YouTube page. We'll have it going because we're going to go a little bit long. Okay. You were saying. I might have to like a brisket or brewery guy on today or something. Mm. Um, those commercials, Fargo's. They're the best. They might be because they're so creepy and cringy. Are these TV commercials? That it almost or? wants me no. to like, like OB and I. just oh. sickens me to the point that I'm like, they're on to something here. It's that bad. What a, give, me a little, give me a little taste. You got to have Olin in here because yeah. he like makes love to the meat on the air. It's just... <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, keep going. Oh, All right. nice. Hey, topic. week two results. Four and two, Billy Lucci. Who's now in first place? I'm not. Good I'm job. not celebrating anything. This is like beating ULM right now. <laughs> so you're in first place. <laughs> We're all so very average. I love yeah. it. I'm like seven and five. I made a hard two. comeback. No, 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 no. We're all like. Yeah, yeah, we're six and six. And and everyone else is six and six. He's seven and five. Yeah. Pitiful. We should all feel better. What did I go I this do. week? This past week, you seven went seven and five against the four. I, mean, I know, like I'm, I'm three and three, three and three both weeks. I went two and four that first week. I was getting a little worried. Well, let's we'll get into back. these games. The first game to discuss today, and remember, we'll keep it on the YouTube page. Uh, number fifteen, Kansas State, two and zero at Missouri, two and zero. By the way, guys, do you know that the last A and M true road win was in Missouri in twenty twenty one? Oh my God, we didn't even talk that. about it. I want to talk. Can we talk about the freaking how terrible we are on the road? <sighs> I've been saying since the first year, I can't stand that they go down there Thursday. I'm with the you one hundred as a player. Players that has done that before for hours on end in their bed. Misery. That is. Jimbo, stop. Yeah, Get down not there good. Friday afternoon. You don't need to get down there that early. I'm telling you, it's not good for your players. It just I, doesn't I, work. In the one year they, they won at Tennessee, they won at Auburn, they won at Mississippi State, it was Friday Friday because of COVID. Now, uh, 25% capacity also. The crowds aren't as intimidating. It's not as tough, people, them, people, but still. Dude, dude I hate act like it's not a big deal. I'm telling you, it's, it's a, a huge deal. It it's How a much deal. I hated night games for the same reason. Yeah, yeah. You're just like, oh, my goodness, let's go. You're sitting in a hotel. I mean, it's the worst. You can't yeah. do that for two days, man. It's not. I'm telling you, it's not good for the team. Probably pretty expensive, too. Well, change something. If you're not winning on the road, you got to change well, something. Well, that's what I think something. is you've got to look at that road record and go, what are we doing? What, what, what can we do to – implement some change here and that would have to you'd have to take a legitimate look at that on the list and have you know whether it's Jimbo or somebody just go hey we are doing this very few teams do this if we were had won our last seven or if we were exactly. 500 on the road in the SEC Nobody'd which isn't easy to, then maybe it's different <laughs> but yeah they, they have really struggled and you got yeah. to look at kind of every reason behind it and that one certainly is up there on the list all right so we all covered right. that Dave. let's go kansas right, let's go. state at missouri 2-0 no, 11 o'clock there sec network broadcast kansas state favored by five and a half i'm picking kansas state on this one yeah me too i'm going with the wildcats That's I, what my, my I thought missouri would wildcat. be good this year um better did like you? A, better did you really yeah how how are they going to be good? I've been, better. I've been saying I this said all good. <laughs> i said good and i corrected okay i thought they'd be better I didn't like what I saw from him last week uh, in terms of following that game. I'm going to go I'm going to go K-State to cover. It is a rivalry. It's a pretty heated rivalry yeah. though, but they are 2 and 0. Oh. That looks that looks pretty good on the screen 2 and 0. Yeah, oh. I like Kansas State <laughs> as well. On the road though, it ain't, it ain't 
K State lost to Tulane about this time last year. <laughs> Change it if you want. No, I'm going K State. Number 14 LSU, one and one at Mississippi State, two and zero. Oh. 11 a.m. Davis Wade Stadium, Scott Field, ESPN broadcast. LSU favored by eight and a half. I'm going with old Will Rogers on this I one, too. man. Dude, I think I am too. I mean, Mississippi State's – and they always give LSU hell. I mean, they it's do. not like LSU well, just do dominates them. They beat them a couple of years ago. Remember, yeah, Mississippi State went to LSU and beat them. COVID. Was that COVID? Yep. <sighs> but, I mean, you and COVID. It was Leach's first Tell game. Seth's oh, yeah. Seth mad because uh, the morning show talks <laughs> too much COVID. <laughs> It's like the first a, episode, the they way, said the word COVID like 20 times. By the like, way, I, I didn't watch it because you soured me on the no, it's political good. Ep- angle. Episode two is really good. I've been watching Hijack, and I really like that. Hijack is good. Hijack is great. Which one's you that need one? Y'all get on that. Is that on oh, Elbow? It's Apple TV. Apple TV. Yeah. Oh, Apple. But what I'm trying to tell you is morning show episode two was good. They made up for all that COVID talk. Okay, good, good. All right, so who I don't know about Jennifer Aniston. They say she's like a reptile or something. Hmm. It's one of these Hollywood reptiles, I say. <laughs> I don't even know. People who think that. People who think you know. You've never heard people think no. like all the ruling class. Oh, lizard people. Holiday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I've heard. That. I, I have friends that think that, and I, I really makes me think you're crazy. But <laughs> people think I'm crazy too. So I put me down for Mississippi State. Too. Mississippi State. Mississippi, Mississippi State. State. Well, Rogers might be a reptile, so I'm gonna go <laughs> with LSU. Oh. I'm going against y'all here. That's no, fine. I'm go not, ahead. You got, a game. Not, you got you a game to spare. I'm going Mississippi State too. At home, LSU coming in tough crowd. Eight. I don't think LSU's playing good enough. Ball I know that's right like now. a that's a pretty big spread. And I question their secondary still. So go Mississippi State to cover LSU to win. South Carolina at Georgia, number one, two and zero, oh, two thirty, Sanford Stadium, CBS broadcast. Georgia favored by a lot. I'm sure and a half. I'll live to regret this. I know I'm going to regret a, this, so but I'm good. I got to go with South Carolina to at least cover that uh, on the road. I know that's right, a lot. Georgia? Twenty-seven he, and a half. What he just did, by the way. He, I wish you would have seen that. <laughs> what did he do? He said twenty-seven, and he goes. I know. Twenty-seven. <laughs> Check the replay. Karate chop. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> replay. Oh, was a weird hand spasm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me go. Oh, dude, I'm kind of with Seth on this. This is I like where y'all are going. Is Georgia really that good this year? I mean, do we know their offense has? I mean, they almost got beat by. Who was that team that almost beat them? I don't think anybody almost beat them, but they but they <laughs> they've off to that's an exaggeration. They haven't been a fast start. Exactly. I look in the second quarter and it's like close game and yeah. they're playing you know sisters of the poor mm-hmm. and i'm going what's going on with georgia this year how much did they score against north carolina though south carolina south carolina against north not carolina enough. Yeah, not not enough. Enough. i'm gonna go south carolina with rattler can we all pick the same again yeah let me go south yeah, carolina i'm going them to cover okay cover georgia's okay. gonna beat the brakes off of them but it might be 26 it might be you know 24 yeah we move on to number 11, Tennessee at 2-0 and versus Florida 1-1. One and 6 o'clock, Florida Field at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. ESPN broadcast. Tennessee favored by 7.5. Is this the world's biggest cocktail party? No, it's no, not. No, dude. This God. is just a normal game. What is the world's biggest cocktail That's party? Georgia, Florida. Florida. Georgia. Welcome to the Georgia, SEC. Florida line. Come on, Seth. <laughs> such they a play big, in Jacksonville. Not bad. You're such a big Anyways. 12-er. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Big 12 truth. I'm picking up uh, Tennessee to cover this. Okay. Milton. Joe Milton. Man, I'm going. I'm going to go Florida at home. Did you know Tennessee has not beat Florida since like 2003 at oh, Florida? And you just really? Google that? No. <laughs> I listen to talk radio. Okay. And Tennessee has only beaten Florida twice in the last 19 years. Wow. So. I'm going to go Florida Interesting. to Good. cover. Looks like I'll be one up on you guys. Uh, we'll see. Tennessee has not really impressed me so far. They were they were in a, like a one-score game with Austin P. maybe at halftime, was it? Or, hmm. uh, Florida's defense, I think, is okay. That home in the swamp, that little point five there is, is sticking <laughs> out to me. Mm-hmm. But – I think this is the week Josh Heupel and the Vols get it going Coming a little up. bit, and um, and then people overreact to it because yeah. they don't know how bad Florida is. I go Tennessee to cover. 
I like okay. that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. BYU two and zero at Arkansas six thirty. Uh, Razorback Stadium, ESPN two broadcast. The Storm and Mormons. Arkansas favored by seven and a half. Coming to favor. I tell you what, baby. BYU. I don't care. They're always going to be tough because they do have that experience level over there. But yeah, I'm going. I'm going to pick them to cover that. I'm not going to say to beat them, but I think they're going to cover that. I mean, I remember playing against BYU and Sarkeesian. <laughs> Billy, Billy just wants to roll his eyes. <laughs> I mean, Sarkeesian just beat us ruined it in Provo. Let's not act like we weren't sitting here as a top ten team preseason rolled in there and uh, went six. And I was six. so mad after that game. I'm I commi- sorry, I committed. And I was the, like, I'm, I'm, he's like, I'm going to change the narrative. Seth pulled a Micah Hudson. He commits to Tech after they lose two games. He's co- that's, he did that's, commit right. After I did. That I was mad. I was like, I'm, I'm going A and M. That's what I'm going to. I'm going to fix this. Well. Yeah. I commend you for your Thank you. your service and loyalty. <laughs> that is classic. That day it wasn't y'all. It wasn't the offense. No, it, it wasn't. It, it, you know what? The AM secondary, that secondary actually looked worse. Yeah. The secondary this weekend just missed it was a lot of it was more missed tackles. That day there was so much confusion and people just didn't even know what was happening back there. You had so many young new <laughs> we were guys. Getting so smoked on the and it was it was DBs. they had like a two hundred and sixty pound tight end running past my man Toya Jones, who's like an Olympic <laughs> yeah, sprinter. Like nobody just nobody knew what they were doing that day. It yeah, was it was so, bad. And and a lot of those guys went on to win the Big Twelve in that secondary. But yeah, offensively, that was yeah. I was so excited. Brandon Stewart threw for like three hundred plus. Sir Parker and yeah. and uh, Eric Bernard both topped a hundred rushing in that game. If you go back and look, oh yeah, and A and M Albert Connell. And then the next week we followed that up. Aaron Oliver had a long touchdown. Our offense looks so good against BYU, and then the next week we go to Lafayette. Yeah, yeah, and, um, six or seven turnovers. No. Yeah, Ooh. just Eight. just threw like just. Toss little turn, little interceptions to defensive people to run. You're telling me that was the next, the next yeah. week. Oh yeah. no! And then yeah. RC was like, you know what? We're going back to two a days. And this was like mid, I do remember mid that. season. I do remember that mid season. We go back into two a days, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I remember y'all talking that about that. That was work. Per, that did not work. RC has made some good adjustments though in the, during his. Time. I remember that that season of thinking talking about thinking too much on defense. It was it was. 2001, shaky, maybe up there at Wyoming, real shaky, almost mm. lost to a bad yeah. Wyoming team. Mm-hmm. And, and just look, bad on defense, and then they really simplify. You should, you can ask Waddell about that. He would be a good one to ask right now, like a midseason stream change while keeping the same coordinator. I remember Christian talking about it because Christian was such a thinker versus just going out and doing it, and they simplified, and the defense was – Dominant starting at that 9-11 game against Oak State. State. Maybe they won that 21-6, to y'all won, something like that. Hmm. And from then on, it was a really good defense. But RC also, you know, making the change from Babers to Sumlin midseason was really good. So you can fix things yeah. midseason no, and can. keep the same – when you have the talent, but you, you have know, to, and they have it. Right? They do. Yes, if you're, they if you're trying to fix problems that are physical, you're in trouble. Yeah, we don't have that problem. We have physical talent. We, we just need to, we need to fix the scheme to work better for our talent. But where I was going with the, the whole BYU thing, Luch, yeah. one of the things I wanted to comment on is when you know the thing about D- BYU that Seth kind of alluded to is that they're always good because they're so freaking old. Yeah, I remember the guy I was playing against was like three years older than me. I'm pretty sure he had a kid in the game. <laughs> I just and and they play dirty. Like yeah. they just they're old and they're dirty and they just like gut punch you. Like they don't pass rush you, they'll bull rush you and then just, you know, try to gut punch you and knock your wind out. That happened to me like three times during the game with the guy I was going against. And I'm going, I mean, are these freaking Mormons? I thought they were supposed to be like <laughs> Christians. These guys are so dirty. I'm like, I, I left BYU you, my thinking, having a whole different opinion of Mormons. Let me tell you that. I'll tell the story, and this is this was a mindset, and I want to see. I remember now today in 2021, people 2021, 2023, two years off. In 2023, <laughs> people in will say, "Oh my here. God, what? Uh, how could you do that? That player, you know, they should retroactively punish A and M and RC." So I won't even say the player's name. 
but y'all might remember the story after the game BYU uh there was a, you guys are going to the bus and there was a uh there was a, a BYU fan and his like kids and they were over aggressively trash talking A&M mm. and the, and the dad and the kid were like you know Aggie suck you know or whatever they were hmm. saying it was just too much and like right in y'all's face going mm. to the bus mm. and one of the A&M defenders I shall not say their name but just turned looked at the dad looked at the kid spit right on the kid and just stared at the dad <laughs> the dad did nothing <laughs> <laughs> so hilarious. hopefully that kid remembers his dad getting spit on for running his mouth, and maybe that's one less BYU. Wait, did he spit on the dad or the, the kid? kid? He just spit <laughs> on the kid. <laughs> that's great. Oh my god. Dude. And I think, uh, I but I don't know if you really should do that after giving up forty plus. No. Maybe before the game, you. But have you that also energy. shouldn't be trash talking guys after a game that you yeah. already won. It's like, dude, yeah. stop. Well, right? here's my enough. thing: the game's not in Provo. Yeah. Pretty sure Arkansas won in Provo last they year. They did, and they beat pretty, they beat them down. Pretty sure BYU is not what they were. Okay, but they're missing Rocket Sanders. Is not playing. True, but I don't know how big of an impact. It's that's a big impact, make. but I think BYU also barely beat Sam Houston a couple. No, I don't right. know what the score was, but they were up like 13-7 yeah, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I'm going to go Arkansas. You went Arkansas? No. Oh. I went BYU. I'm going to go Arkansas. Right? But I don't trust Arkansas now. I don't either. These are the games that they like Oh, no, look at them backtracking. Here but I'm going to go with Arkansas at home, and this will be another – I think this will be another SEC overreaction this week. Uh, Arkansas will look good. I'm more looking forward to seeing Arkansas play against LSU yeah. next week. That'll be a pretty telling one to me. I really need to win. The, I really need to win this one here. This is a big one for me personally. I'm going to go Arkansas. Arkansas. To, Arkansas. BYU. Trust Arkansas. All right, ULM at Texas A&M, three o'clock. Caulfield, SEC Network, big number. A&M favored by 36, thirty-six and a half. Thirty-six point five. I'm going to guess. And when I look at big numbers like this, I think more of like how many points can we hold ULM to? If we give up 14, which I think could happen, I think we could give up 14, right? You know, trash point, trash touchdown in the fourth quarter or something. Can we score 51? Can we score 51 against them? Can we? Yeah, I think we can. Will we? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say we don't cover 36 and a half. This is so aggressive, man. Thirty six. Like, what makes hot. what makes ULM worse than uh, New Mexico? New Mexico. Well, New Mexico I don't know the, the answer. To the that. spread of that was thirty seven and a half. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Uh, here's my problem with that spread. It's not. I don't know that. I don't feel like ULM will or should score fourteen. Um, but I do think. I think it'll be harder for A and M to get up to fifty. I know we were hitting on a lot of cylinders. UNLV was willing to say, "Hey, hit us with these big plays." I think ULM will do more of like what Miami did. Say, "We don't want you to hit yeah. us with big plays," and I think and they, they won't cover our guys with They offensively, because they threw, they've thrown for a combined two hundred yards in two games. I think offensively, they're going to be more of a slow. Uh, let's let's just keep it on the ground and run this clock. And I mean, even so, if they get one touchdown, here's here's my. Here's I'm what, gonna say yes. A and M covers okay. slightly. All right, here's my pick. We are gonna dominate this game, but 10. I just don't think we're gonna cover that. Forty-eight ten. I mean, I can certainly see forty-eight to ten. I'm not. I can see that too. You know what but though? I'm, I'm taking it back. Jimbo really dials back in that fourth quarter in he these really kind does, of games. Man. He yeah. always you does. could definitely see them getting outscored like seven to three. Yeah, it almost happened against the back door to us against uh, New Mexico. I'm, I'm going to say we're going to kill them, but we're not going to cover that. So I'm picking ULM score, to at least cover. My final score is actually going to be 